Welcome back, traders and investors, to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep, brought to you by MarketFi. I'm your co-host, Joel Conan, along with Garrett Cook, and we have Blake Morrow on the line. He's a chief currency strategist at Wise Trade. Blake, how you doing this morning? I'm doing great. Thank you guys for having me back on again. It's been, uh, it's been a while, since July, actually. Okay. All right. Well, I, first of all, I got to talk to you about this FXCM uh, debacle, and uh, I hope you're not clearing them. I just thought, uh, did you see any kind of fallout from that? Have there been any changes in regulations regarding currency trading? And uh, do you see the chance of something like that happening again? Oh, you know, that's a great question. It's a loaded question. Uh, no, we don't clear through FXCM, and, uh, and, and matter of fact, they're one of our I guess, competing brokerage firms. My parent company is uh, MB Trading. Uh, ranked by Barron's is like one of the top execution brokers, you know, for many years in a row. And, you know, so we kind of compete with FXCM, but the fallout that we really got was some clients came over um, because we, we I, I guess, you know, people were looking at the stability of the companies and, and whatnot. And I think, you know, what happened with FXCM um, shook the trees a little bit. And so we, we actually saw some customers come over to us after the fact, <clears throat> excuse me, we um, we also, uh, you know, I've, I've been trying to steer people clear of the Swiss pairs and especially the Euro Swiss over the last several months. So I think because of that, we didn't have as many traders, you know, trying to trying to play that trade, if you will, being long the Euro Swiss. It, 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 the trade didn't make any sense to me. I, I know I knew a lot of people and big money traders that were doing it, too. And I'm like, I'm like, I always thought about more of a, a European Brexit, if you will, or you know, something shaking up the eurozone that would have uh, urged people to, 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 to investors to really come to the Swiss franc and, and eventually test the floor. I didn't think the floor would be, you know, pulled, if you will. Um, so I wasn't looking at it in that respect. But, uh, but anyway, I, I think our fallout was very minor, and uh, like I said, we actually picked up. Some 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 uh, some customers over at MB Trading. So. Uh, good good intuition there. Uh, just looking at this uh, FXCM stock here, I think uh, like the only pop that it had, I uh, I was lucky enough to play it a little bit on the long side. I'm glad I got out. Um, is there you know I mean are they going to survive? Uh, I, you know I I I I look at the terms and uh, that that they're dealing with and some pretty. I mean, if if they don't pay pay down their the the the, the money that they've borrowed over the course of the next year, I, I would assume that's going to be pretty detrimental to the stock. Uh, I'm sure they're looking for other alternatives too. It's it's kind of like Greece. I, I mean, I hate to you know draw the parallels there, but it's it's like Greece. You know, Greece is trying to survive under really you know um, you know high rates and and, and and almost impossible terms and I, I don't know if FXCM has kind of gotten themselves in that type of situation but I think the stock is reflecting that and um, you know I, I hope they survive I, I you know because even though they may be a competing broker of, of, of us um, it would be a shame because I think they, they really run a, a great operation over there uh, unfortunately they did see some of the risk but but they do they do have a you know they have a good company and hope they they can survive this uh, the situation okay uh, you follow other things besides the currency market uh, s p 500 futures did make a new all-time high at 8975 eclipsing the former high at 8875 kind of tough to trade it up here I mean certainly not going to make any money shorting it do you have any uh, short-term strategy for the e mini s p 500. Well, thanks for asking. And uh, yeah, I mean, we're sitting, and I'm looking at the the the, the S and P futures, just the continuous contract, and we're you know obviously knocking our heads right up against previous highs that were set in December. I, I was looking at this cup and handle pattern, and we've been following it all week. That start developing on the sixth of, um, of 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 February, and it really started to take off on the um, on the eleventh, uh, I believe. And so that pattern the cup and handle pattern and i don't know if you're looking at the chart but uh but the four hour chart really points to about uh, on the futures about 2097 or so so uh, you know I, I agree with you it's tough to be on the short side i wouldn't want to be on the i would be careful being on the long side because there's a, a few event well there's some event risk this weekend and you know we've got president's day uh, weekend so we've got a long weekend and on on monday the market's expected to you know greece is expected to you know, patch something together with the with the with the trochia or the the EU, if you will, and I guess 
you know, Greece has been pretty defiant. So I'm assuming something's going to get done. But at the same time, you know, how does Europe react to that? I mean, everybody knows that, at least everybody assumes, I think, that the Greece and the EU and, and, and the Trochi, as it is, will get something um, patched together, at least in the near term. And I think everybody's confident of that. Uh, but I also believe the market's been buying uh, on that news as well. So how Europe reacts to it Monday or you know Sunday night, Monday, uh, you know, that leaves us as, as, as North American traders, it kind of leaves us exposed until Tuesday. So, I mean, you could get a buy the rumor, sell the news, you know, the, the DAX goes, uh, you know, belly up, uh, not belly up, but you know what I'm saying. You get a little buy the rumor, sell the news on Monday. And next thing you know, you got North American traders kind of underwater come Tuesday. I think that is a risk. And so it's hard for me to, <laughs> it's hard for me to buy up here. Uh, but at the same time, I, it's, it's, you know, like you said, it's kind of tough to short the market too. <laughs> So Blake, you know, being being the pip czar and the man who understands FX, what do you think is going to end up coming out of uh, out of some of the FX pairs that are dealing with Aussie and New Zealand? We have Australia cutting rates, and New Zealand seems to be holding them. What's what's the deal with this divergence here? Is is housing going to be the issue in Australia? I mean, what why would they be cutting rates? And what's this going to mean for the FX markets? Considering, you know, Australia seen its dollar just you know basically fall apart in the past what little over six months. Yeah, you know, that's a great question. And uh, first of all, I'd like to say that uh, my, my, my PIP handle or my uh, my Twitter handle, that was actually given to me by a, a customer or a trader, you know, one of our one of our uh, traders uh, years ago, and it just kind of stuck, and I, I, I picked up the handle. And, and it's funny. It's kind of it, – it's more of a joke than anything, but I appreciate appreciate the, 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 the question. Um, now, as far as uh, the divergence in central banks, you know, the last time we spoke here was at the end of uh, – it was at the end of July, and uh, I was trading the dollar long, and I was I was very very long the dollar based on the divergence between the European Central Bank and the FOMC. And back then we talked about the FOMC possibly raising rates, and it's it's funny it's you know you fast forward a, a few months later and we're still in the same boat where we're talking about the Fed raising rates, and I don't even know if six months from now we might even be having the same conversation. But the fact is that you've got China really slowing down and deflation, uh, as we've been talking about for the last couple of years, gold has reflected uh, a deflationary pressure that was present in the U.S. and Europe. And now what 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 investors are finding out, it's not just a U.S. and European issue. It's now a global issue. You saw it in the China um, CPI numbers. I think it was earlier this week or last week. They, they came out. 0.4% worse than expected, and, and China is now dealing with not only slower growth, but deflationary pressures as well, which is going to weigh on commodities. So now you've got you know, the, the Australian Central Bank that has gone into reverse. You've got the uh, RBNZ that was raising rates this last year that might find themselves in a similar situation that the ECB was several years back when the ECB raised rates, then they went to ZERP, you know, basically, you know, where they're at right now, effectively ZERP and negative interest rates. So you've got the RBNZ that's going, oh, well, well, maybe we shouldn't have raised rates. They may have to go in reverse. And so now you're seeing the divergence between the U.S. dollar and quite possibly even this week you had the uh, European Central Bank and yesterday Mark Carney saying rates are more likely to go up and down. So now you've got the market that's, that, that just got finished repricing the Bank of England of not being so hawkish, even through the, you know, the, the, the Scottish uh, boat. The, the pound continued to get crushed. Now you might get the cable, the pound dollar, or the pound, excuse me, uh, a little bit more firmer based on some, you know, hawkish rhetoric from the Bank of England. So now you got the Bank of England and, and the FOMC possibly raising rates. You got other central banks going into negative territory. You even saw, saw the uh, Danish central bank just, just, just recently and Rick, Rick's bank this week. Um, Everybody's lowering rates. Everybody's going into negative negative rates, and you've got a couple standouts like the FOMC and the Bank of England that's going the other direction. So that divergence is going to continue, and I and I think as a currency trader, we need to focus on the pound being stronger and outperforming most currencies. The U.S. dollar continuing to outperform as long as the Fed does not, you know, does not veer away from their current path and. And I think the Fed's got a little bit more on the line than just, you know, do we raise rates because um, do we raise rates because it's the right thing to do or because the economy is is, is is effectively showing us that we're strong. 
The Fed also uh, is trying to protect their, their most valuable asset, which is their um, their power of their rhetoric and their job owning. And that, that means that they need to protect that. And if they've led the market down the path that they are going to raise rates, uh, like I told you guys back in July, I think that the Fed for, for many years is probably going to raise rates going to weaken the economy they're going to lower rates and we're going to say they're going to do it again and then they're going to lower and we're going to we're going to get a series of fits and starts by the fed uh probably over the next several years where we try to raise rates and you know things weaken a little bit they might have to be more accommodative and i think it's going to be kind of messy uh as far as rates go but that divergence just to come back to your original question i think it's still going to be it's going to be a theme in the in the near term, and um, that means that those commodity currencies are probably going to continue to be weighed down. So, what happens then with the, um, you know, with with the price of the dollar? Because it seems like everybody's getting long it. It seems heavily, you know, overweighted onto the long side. Are we going to get a rebalance coming up here? I mean, I'm looking at you know UUP, and I saw you know this is a ticker, um, uh, uniform uniform Papa. It's an ETF that plays yeah. off the dollar, and we saw a few guys coming in with some huge option plays uh, a few months ago. And they were just straight, you know, outright bullish on the whole trade. And I haven't, you know, maybe the guy hacked it up when he was selling away or he's still holding it. It was a similar trade we saw in 2012. But what, um, you know, is there going to be a rebalance in the dollar coming forward with, with the Fed expectations? Because everybody seems mixed. And even I just reversed my view. I thought they were going to raise in June and taking a look at U.S. government finances. I don't see how the Fed could do that without, you know, putting some serious damage on the sovereign nation that gives it its very power. Do we get a dollar yeah, rebalance? Yeah. I'm sorry, I hated. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. I, I was just saying those are really great observations. The dollar's had an epic run. It's um, and 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 the dollar seems very one-sided. I mean, everybody's on the long dollar trade. But I also, from a from a retail standpoint, I see a lot of traders trying to fade it in anticipation of a little bit of a shakeout. Frankly, the dollar's on a you know the dollar, in my opinion, is 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 uh, if you look at it from a much longer term basis, uh, we were looking at it from a, a, a price scale and a logarithmic scale that we're, we're up against some pretty key levels here and we've we've basically challenged uh if you follow Fibonacci the 50 percent retracement from um you know recent peaks back in like 2000 or uh, you know 98 or something like that and and uh but it, it had a similar retracement from the the moves in the 70s and 80s and and as much as i'd like to think that the dollar is going to you know, pull back. The fact of the matter is, it's not. It's it's holding on to a majority of its gains, and I think any uh, any pullback is going to be fairly limited. And I have a feeling that the market's trying to lean on that, you know, on that that pullback in the dollar. And and I think a lot of longs are probably you know taking some profits here. It's been an epic run. I mean, you cannot uh, cannot deny that. But at the same time, we cannot deny the fact that the Fed is diverging away from other central banks. Now, when you say, well, the, the Fed can't raise rates, again, I, I think the Fed will raise rates not because the economic data is, 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 is necessarily pointing in that direction, but if you look at, you look at job growth, job growth, you know, and you can, you, we can argue about the, the, the types of jobs that are being created, but job growth is at a, at a pretty, uh, you know, high rate, you know, higher, higher than we've seen in, in, in six or seven years since pre-financial crisis era. Um, and yes, we have no, no uh, inflation to speak of, but again, the Fed, they also want to buffer themselves in case there is a, another recessionary type of period. What are they going to use as a, a defense mechanism? They have to be able to lower rates somewhat. And, um, you know, do they launch another uh, round of quantitative easing? That might be their only option if they don't raise rates before, you know, something else happens. And like I said, the Fed's also trying to protect their reputation. Um, the, the Fed is, it, 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 in my view, um, they, they are very well respected. And so what they, uh, what they say the market uh, reacts to, and they don't want to lose that. And that's their most valuable weapon in their, in their, uh, in their, or their most, you know, the pro uh, their, their best tool in their tool belt, if you will, is their, is their words. And so. like, I've seen, I've seen that too. And I'm wondering, you know, if the fed's going to kind of do like what the Swissies did, where everybody's saying, oh, you're not going to be able to do anything. You can't do it. You can't do it. And then just come out one night and just take some crazy action that ends up, you know, rebalancing <laughs> FX markets. I could see the fed doing that, but it just, they're running out of tools, and some of the people I've been talking to is the way that that's going to be financed. They're going to start going into issuing tips instead of bonds, and it's just we're in such a bizarre norm now. 
I mean, I, I think it, it doesn't seem like people are realizing that there's been 18 central banks taking interest rate action since the beginning of the year. This is it's this crazy. Is very it is. It, yeah, you're right. It's it's wild. It's wild, and 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 we live in a in a very uh, very unique uh, time, I think, in history. You know, I've been I've been in the markets for 20 years, and this is definitely some of the most volatile. Uh, trading environments I've seen. It's good as a trader, uh, as an investor, you got to be a little nervous up here as the markets have made ma- a massive run over the last, you know, five or six years. Um, but, you know, with, with all the central bank activity, it, it's, it's obviously creating a lot of, a uh, lot of opportunities in the currency market. And it's a tough call. And, and I, I look at it from a, from a trading standpoint, and I was extremely bullish this summer in the dollar. I rode the dollar you know, like a bucking Bronco for the last, you know, six months or so and really backed off as, as we approached the holidays. And, and, and I am conflicted as a trader and which means that I, I tend to be a little bit more active uh, as far as the dollar goes these days. And I tend to be a little bit more uh, trading both directions uh, because I, I don't want to be committed too committed one way or the other at this point. We're a pretty big inflection point in the market as far as the dollar goes. So then... All right, so we, we've covered the Fed, we've covered central banks, we've covered we've covered dollar moves. What's the story then out of China? I mean, there's rumors about you know greater greater easing coming out of there. Um, no one seems to really be able to confirm any of this, but China's clearly in trouble. We've got the U.S. in trouble, and we've got Europe and Greece talking about what's going on over there. So what does this mean? Well, what does this mean globally? A as a citizen of the U.S. Because I was thinking when you were talking about riding the dollar up, and I'm trying to think of some of the disconnects that happen in FX markets. And it's it's when you're a trader, you have to view it from a trader's perspective. But as a citizen. It's kind of like, you know, what, what do I do? You know, I got to make money here, but I can't just, you know, help support the currency. I know that um, sterling is really, you know, something that the UK people are really proud of. So um, what's going to be your big play going forward? If you're, if you're looking at all this craziness in the world, is there any certainty that you're able to get behind? Aside from just being, you know, living in America and looking at the US dollar as a strong point, what are you anchoring to? What's, what's your personal favorite thing to take exposure to with the greatest level of confidence? Well, that's a great question. Uh, I, you know, the, the, using the term currency war has been a big, you know, people really shy away from that. But, hey, you know, I, I, let's call it spade a spade. China's going to engage in this, and it's probably not going to be a good thing. You know, China's looking at Singapore, China's looking at Japan, and most other Asian, uh, you know, Korea. Everybody's trying to weaken their currency, and China's going to have to re-engage into that in order to spur some, uh, some, some natural, well, natural, I guess is not the word to use, but some sort of uh, stimulus is going to be uh, end, end up weakening their, 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 their renminbi or their yuan. And you know, remember, they've gradually let the yuan really uh, strengthen over the course of the last five or six years. So at this point, you know, if China re-engages into this, you, you know, again, call it whatever you want, I'll call it a currency war. If they engage into a currency war, I think it's going to be it could get pretty hairy in, in, in the, 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 the Asian Pacific region and those currencies as well, um, which is just going to further strengthen the dollar. <laughs> if they weaken the yuan, it'll strengthen the, the dollar even further. I don't know how it's going to act versus the European currencies, but just to, to go to your, your, your question, what are my favorite trades right now? I still like shorting the Aussie dollar. I don't, and, and the New Zealand dollar. I don't necessarily like shorting them against the uh, the dollar at this time. Although um, it's been a the, the Aussie and the Kiwi dollar have come down to levels that three years ago I said I would be so happy to buy the Aussie dollar at seventy nine cents. I'd be so happy to buy the Kiwi dollar down at seventy five cents. Well, here we are three years later at levels that I've played them short to, and I'm looking at them going. I don't know if China's I, I I don't know if China's capitulated yet it, to use a you know to use a not a term that I like to use a, a lot, but I think China might continue to weaken as far as their economy goes, and so it may continue to drag down those currencies. But instead of playing the dollar, I'm playing the euro uh, slightly just in case we get a bounce in the euro dollar because of you know what's happening in Greece. But what I am playing is I'm playing the the the, the Great British Pound against the Aussie and the Kiwi dollar. Because as the market starts to price in maybe a more hawkish Bank of England, um, they you, you still look at the RBA is cutting rates maybe one or two more times this year, and maybe the RBNZ backing off and, and maybe even cutting rates after raising them a full 
percentage point last year. So I think playing some of the what we call the cross rates are, are is the way that I've been. Well, I've already been playing them for the last month or two, and I'll probably continue to play those to the upside instead of playing the dollar where I'm just not so comfortable trading. We've been on the line with Blake Morrow. He's the chief currency strategist at Wise Trade uh, and giving us uh, an outlook on the world currency markets. Blake, thanks for coming on. Have a great day. We hope to speak to you again soon. You guys are gentlemen. Thank you so much for having me.